Welcome to A Better HR Business, the podcast that looks at how HR consultants and HR tech firms grow their businesses and how they help their employers to get the best out of their people. Remember, for show notes and downloads, go to www.getmorehrclients.com forward slash podcast. That's getmorehrclients.com forward slash podcast. Okay, let's get started. Hi, thanks for joining me again. Great to have you along. I'm really looking forward to today's conversation with Gemma Alicia Long. Gemma has set up a brilliant business called HR & Co. in wonderful Coventry. And I noticed on LinkedIn recently that she was celebrating the first birthday for the business. So I thought it'd be great to have a chat to learn about the formation and then what the business does for client companies. But firstly, Gemma, thank you very much for joining me today. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, really looking forward to it. And happy birthday. I didn't bring a cake or anything, but that was Thank great to you. see. Yeah. How'd you feel? Yeah, no, amazing. The first year, as most business owners will hopefully understand, it's been a complete roller coaster, but it's been absolutely amazing. So I'm just really excited to get into year two. That's so great. And the formation of the business, I know you had a long history in HR mm-hmm. doing all sorts of stuff, but obviously you just won the lotto and it was mm-hmm. easy to set up a business. Is that right? You know, rolling in the millions to set it up. Or was it a case of this is a big decision for me to make? I'm curious to see, you know how you felt at that formation stage? Yeah, no, setting up a business is such a big decision. And I've toyed with the idea for the last couple of years, but wasn't brave enough to do it. And then I was in a full-time job, a good salary. And it got to the point that I didn't have the flexibility for my daughter and just one day decided, right, let's just go for it. And one day decided, you know, friends, family told me I was crazy. You know, I had a (laughs) a single parent I had a mortgage to pay and I just quit my job and decided right I had one month's salary in the bank and decided let's launch a business I had one client who was still a client who were absolutely amazing but I also had a promise of some associate work but it was still such a big risk but one I'm so glad I took wow well done and the client that you had so you had started working with them in the lead up or how did that happen So yeah, that was somebody I previously had worked with who had set up their business. It wasn't a huge amount of work. It was just helping them with their business a couple of hours a week. And that's now their business has grown. So that's now gone to at least one day a week I do for them. But that was just a couple of hours a week for them. Brilliant. And then how did you find the associate work? You just called out to your network or how did you do that? Yeah, I called out to the network and just spammed people on LinkedIn, and just put myself out there was really brave and made some amazing connections and I still do some associate work because I absolutely love it I love the different types of work and I love the collaboration with other HR consultancies and some of those associate relationships are now their friends and I see them as people that I work with and speak to on a daily day basis. Brilliant and you used the word brave in there obviously it was brave to step out and launch your own business. I mean, that's a huge step also, but you mentioned brave in context of reaching out and getting in touch with people on LinkedIn. Was that not natural for you? Probably not. No, I wasn't, you know, I still struggle with the whole networking. So it wasn't natural to me. I think it's about being brave, being confident and selling yourself, which I wasn't great at doing that. So that's something that was a real learning curve for me. Yeah. yeah. When you're talking to either prospects or you're telling people about your business, and particularly in the start, in the early days, you didn't really have many business successes, business cases to talk about, right? Because it's a brand new business. How did you get around that issue? I suppose I was lucky that I'd done a lot of interim work. And I think interim work is very similar to consultancy. I'd also worked in a consultancy. So I'd done the role that I was doing, but just for someone else's consultancy. So I had already worked with lots of small businesses and, you know, 20 years HR experience. So I certainly have that experience behind me. So we're sort of feeding into turning into what the business does in the moment, but have you found certain, I don't know, pain points, issues, challenges, or aspirations of business leaders, business owners that have called them to getting in touch with you or being interested in what you provide? Are there certain things that rise to the top? Yes, for me, a lot of business owners, they need flexible, they need bespoke HR solutions. So that's why they use me rather than one of the bigger providers. I can be more flexible, more agile. I can be on site if they need that. 
So it's definitely the flexibility. I offer pay-as-you-go HR services, which some of the bigger companies just can't offer that, that flexibility. Yeah, absolutely. So let's look at HR and Co. Who is it that you help and what is it that you do for these companies? Yeah, so I help small businesses. I, I do work with some large businesses. My largest client has 80 employees. My smallest has just two. So real variety there. Industries I work with, it is such a huge variety. So it's anything from, I've got an accountancy practice, I've got a dentist, we've got a farm, we've got short stay company, hospitality. So a huge, huge mix. Sorry to any of my clients if I haven't mentioned you're amazing. <laughs> and that's what I love, an engineering company. And it's constantly adapting. I really get to know the business, get to know the industry, get to know the people. So it's wearing all those different hats for all those different industries. Wow, that's brilliant. And were there certain issues that got them interested in the first place, like employee turnover or employee engagement, disciplinary issues? Are there certain, you know, that whole 80-20 rule, were there things that became more common than others? Yeah, a lot of clients ring me when there's an issue. So I'll come in, parachute in and deal with that issue. And then once that issue is dealt with, then it's like, okay, we need to now get HR. And then I will get back to the basics. So it's kind of, I'm usually brought in, do the firefighting, and then we'll get to the basics and we'll set up all the amazing HR practices to make sure they're compliant, but also make sure they've got exceptional places for their employees to work. Got it. Now, there are some pretty big companies in this space. What is the difference? Why would the company work with you versus one of those mega corps? Yeah, I mean, a few of my clients, they're in contract with some of the bigger companies. And HR and Co, we offer expert, affordable and bespoke HR solutions that are bespoke to you, whereas a lot of the bigger companies they don't have the ability to be more bespoke. One of my clients rang me the other night at seven o'clock and I'm on a team's call at 7am in the morning for them. So it's definitely that personal bespoke and agile side that they prefer working with a smaller company. Yeah, absolutely. So bespoke is a funny word. It can mean all kinds of things, but you just reminded me of a situation once. So I'm from Australia and I remember yeah. flying from one side of the country to the other which is a five hour flight for a 45 minute meeting because wow. client company, there was a union issue and the union was, you know, digging their heels in and the head office of that union was in another part of the country. They wouldn't get that with one of the mega corps, I suspect. Yeah. There's someone yeah. hopping on the plane and being able to deal with that situation and then resolving it and everyone's happy and moving on. I suspect that's a key difference in what you do than phoning up a helpline where anyone could answer. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, I previously worked for a larger HR consultancy and I loved it. But as it kind of moved into more of a model where it was moving into more of a call centre, that's when I kind of fell out of love with the company because I wanted to offer that HR, I wanted to be that HR business partner, that extension to the company, not just there on the phone to give HR advice. I wanted it to be expert bespoke to that company. Yeah. Absolutely. When I went through university, I was on a, a phone line, a government phone line. So mm -hmm. it was the free thing called wage line. I was a student and I suspected it was probably not that dissimilar to people on some of the other phone lines in other companies. But yeah, if someone phoned up with a tricky question, I'd say, just a moment, please. And I put them on mute yeah. and I'd frantically look through the files going, I have no idea what I'm doing here, but I'm going to answer the question eventually. Handle it. Okay, fine. But someone like you with the expertise, but also an understanding of the business, I think that's a huge strength. And I suspect that's part of the key selling message to clients and potential clients. Is that right? Yeah, definitely. And I know my clients and I really get to know how they run their business. And a lot of the time when the client brings me with a HR query, the questions that I ask, sometimes it's, you know, what's your ideal solution so we can work backwards rather than I'm just giving the textbook advice that they might get if they ring one of the HR advice lines or ACAS. They've got yeah. more of the commercial element to the HR advice. They've got options then. Yeah, got it. Now, how do you actually structure your services and you know send up fees? I don't actually want to go into the numbers, but I'm curious, do you do hourly rates? Do you do project rates, retainers? How do you structure your services? 
Yeah, so we have flexible rates. So we have pay-as-you-go HR, which is really popular. A lot of the clients use me on pay-as-you-go and then they see what service they've got and then they sign up as a retainer. Most of the clients are on retainer. Retainer clients always get priority and that's a monthly fee from as little as £225. So for £225 a month, they can get a HR director, HR department for such a small amount. And yeah, so we have retainer fees and we also do project basis as well. The things, if there's a HR project they need, we can quote that. We always quote according to the business and what their needs are. Got it. And how do you actually find new clients? That is a good question. Lots of my clients come to me through recommendations of the previous people I've worked with or My clients might get a friend or fellow business owner say to them, do you know any HR consultants? And then LinkedIn as well, get lots of people reach out to me on LinkedIn. It might just be for a query and then that leads to signing up as a retained client. Nice. And on LinkedIn, how do they find you? They just do a search or are you posting stuff on LinkedIn? Are you doing messages? What are you doing there? Yeah, a little bit of a mix, really. It usually is referral. So someone might say, Gemma, HR and Co., I used to work with her. And then it'll start a conversation and then I'll explain what I can do. And if they like the service, they usually sign up as a retained client. Brilliant. And what do you see the future holding for you and your business? You've hit the one-year mark. What do you see, whether it be service delivery or service areas, what's coming down the line, do you think? Yeah, really excited for year two. You know, I've built up a brilliant client base. So continuing working with that client base and just growing that client base and just offering brilliant expert HR to more small businesses. Nice. And then finally, you mentioned at the start that having, I don't know, flexibility to spend time with your daughter and to Mm -hmm. manage life, I guess. How have you protected that or worked (laughs) around that priority? Yeah, there's that saying, you leave a nine to five to do a 24-7. I think as a business owner, it's a work in progress for the work-life balance, but definitely working for yourself. It gives you that flexibility. A lot of my clients aren't nine to five, so it might be that I do need to work on a Saturday or a Sunday, but that's fine because I can schedule it in and I've got that kind of that work-life balance, but definitely is something I'm working on. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. And I personally, I live and die by my online scheduling calendar thingy yeah. which means that I try not to do the back and forth of scheduling meetings it's just could you use the link that way any time zones it cuts out the back and forth stuff but also it's just built around my calendar so if I have regular things I need to do that are non-work related they're just blocked out automatically but it's just built around my life automatically and that's certainly been useful Gemma I think it's an amazing business you've created and you've made a success of it and you were brave And it seems like it's paying off. So any final advice to other people, either in the UK or further afield on how to create a successful business? Yeah, I come from a background with no business owners in my family. So it was quite challenging. And you kind of think business owners, it's just not, you know, stay in paid employment, but it's about actually looking at those opportunities, especially for me as a single parent, have being self-employed can actually give you more flexibility than being in an employed role. But I think we don't look at those opportunities as flexible working. So it's definitely something for other working parents to look at going into self-employment and setting up businesses. Brilliant. Well done. Well, again, thank you very much for sharing your story today and I wish you all the best for the business going forward. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us today on A Better HR Business, the podcast that explores the world of HR consulting and HR tech businesses. For show notes and downloads, go to www.getmorehrclients.com forward slash podcast. That's getmorehrclients.com forward slash podcast. Remember to subscribe and share the show with any friends who are busy growing a HR business. Thanks and see you next time.